Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started now. We want to give every young person a competitive advantage when they graduate, so they have every success to apply their knowledge in the classroom in their life. And yet in Ontario, since 2005, the Grade 9 math curriculum has not been updated. We have not had a new curriculum, yet YouTube was just launched in 2005. Twitter and the first iPhone did not exist in 2005. The world has changed, the economy has changed, and so should the curriculum that inspires and informs our children. And that's why we're proud to be launching a new curriculum that is focused on the job market, gives young people skills they can apply to their lives, to their households, to personal budgeting, with an emphasis on financial literacy. We're proud to be doing this because it gives every child an opportunity to succeed, including by de-streaming it and lifting up every student in our province so they can achieve their full potential. This has been a momentous occasion for uh, the math curriculum in the province of Ontario. Uh, the last time the math curriculum was uh, completed was in 2005. In the last 16 years, there has been significant changes in the conceptual understanding of mathematics for students in the province. Three of the major changes I think that this curriculum uh, has as part of it are coding, financial literacy, and data literacy. We finally have a math curriculum to start students on an equal footing. So I'm really excited about this new math curriculum. We know that historically, Black students, Indigenous students, and even racialized students have experienced more than often being streamed into applied classes. And we have known what the detriments of that has caused students. A lot of those students did not graduate from grade 12. They felt like they were not being put into class that would give them the opportunity to enter careers where math was going to be a prerequisite. So now we're going back to the basics, something that teachers have called for for many years. And the minister listened through public consultations, through phone calls, through virtual meetings. He listened and he understood what it is we've been asking for for so long. Rote learning works. Repetition works with students, ensuring that all students are starting on the same footing in grade nine, and then they can decide later on where they want to go within, within school and within their careers. We want young people to reimagine mathematics. I mean, here at the Civic Center Library, the architectural feat underscores the necessity for STEM education to lead the way. We want young people to be inspired to see themselves reflected in their buildings, in their communities, and in the broader economy that is changing around us. That's why we're putting a heavy emphasis on financial literacy, on personal responsibility, on learning about the concepts of interest, of debt, of savings, of how to use a credit card, how to take out a mortgage or rent. These are life skills that are gonna set students apart. It's what was missing in Ontario's curriculum that now students will benefit from today and in the future. At First Robotics Canada, we're really excited about these changes to the Ontario curriculum. The government is obviously making some really decisive decisions here to update that curriculum and help prepare the students for the future. Jobs of the future involve coding, robotics, engineering, data management. And at First Robotics Canada, that coding is really important for what we do. Coding the robots, uh, getting them to perform on the field accurately and appropriately is really important. So we're really excited about these changes. I'm standing today in front of my own kid's school to talk about curriculum reform, STEM education and manufacturing in Ontario. The sector today in Ontario employs 750,000 Ontarians making great products we use every day, from cars to robots to food to medicine. However, for the sector to grow and be prosperous, we need to make sure the next generation of workers are developed here at home and have the right skill sets. That's why we're pleased to support the Ontario government's moves to improve STEM education, to enhance mathematics and coding in grade nine. Thank you very much to the province of Ontario and Minister Lecce for your continued support for our sector to drive prosperity forward for Ontarians. Ontario's new math curriculum will bring math to life to every student. It's gonna ensure we help them succeed, including racialized and indigenous students by breaking down those barriers by de-streaming the curriculum. It's gonna support every student in Ontario through our four year $200 million math investment to make sure students have the resources they need. That includes more access this summer to math tutoring for students in this province because we believe in their potential and we're gonna invest in their success. Good afternoon. I wanna just first off begin by acknowledging the tragic events that took place in London, Ontario this week. Uh, Canada needs to be a loving and safe place for all. And this demonstrates that we have more work to do but I just want to express my solidarity with Muslims in London, uh, where I probably lived for five years, and really with Muslims around the country, uh, and that our prayers are with the victims, the families, and the entire community. 
Thank you for joining us today and for allowing me to share exciting new news about our updated grade nine math curriculum in Ontario. Believing in our students' potential and investing in their success, that was a fitting way to end the video. And I just wanna reaffirm our government's unwavering commitments to helping all students reach their full potential and prepare them for the jobs of tomorrow. With a emphasis on real life learning, the application of real life learning of math to everyday situations, challenges, and problems. These are life and job skills that will give every child a competitive advantage when they graduate. Now, this includes how we've responded throughout the, this historic pandemic to the many challenges of COVID-19. In addition to focusing on student success, well-being, health, and safety has really always been our top priority. And while it's been a challenging school year for kids right across the country, our focus remains on protecting against the spread of COVID-19 and ensuring a safe, strong return to school in September as normal as possible for children and for staff. With vaccines now available for all students 12 and up and all educators and all staff at our schools, there is hope on our horizon. In the meantime, today, we're proud to be releasing the new grade nine math commitment following through on our commitment to the people of Ontario to improve math scores and numeracy within our classrooms and for the next generation of innovators, of entrepreneurs and workers within our province. It represents the first major update to the grade nine math curriculum since 2005. And I think it's fair to say that the world has changed, the economy has changed, the job market has changed, and so should the curriculum that informs and inspires your child. This curriculum will put students on a path of success through relevant learning with real world applications while also ending early streaming in this province. A new grade nine math course is an important part of our commitments to end early streaming in Ontario secondary schools and support black racialized and other students facing barriers. With a heavy emphasis on financial literacy, this is gonna help young people make the best decisions for their lives and inform them about the skill sets that they need. With that, I'll turn it back to Kaylin and we'll take some questions. We'll go to the phone lines for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. First question. Your first question comes from Randy Rath from CHC TV. Randy, please go ahead. Sure. Um, the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board sent you a letter recently asking to be able to have elementary elementary grades back in the classroom for the last week of the school year. How are you going to respond to this letter? Yeah, thanks, Randy. We provided guidance to all school boards in the province of Ontario, guidance that was approved and uh, developed in collaboration with the Office of the Chief Medical Officer of Health. We asked school boards to follow that guidance. And of course, if they have concepts or ideas that may go beyond it, to seek the approval of the local medical officer of health. At the end of the day, we all want to keep families safe. Uh, but we do believe, and the Premier has been clear, in finding innovative ways to celebrate the achievements of students who've really gone above and beyond this year. And uh, I think they deserve our recognition. Follow up? Well, I, I'm sorry, Minister, but that didn't really answer my question. Uh, my question was, will you allow in-class learning for the elementary grades during the last week of the school year for the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board? They say that the, um, the, the Regional Medical Officer of Health thinks that kids should be in the classroom. Yeah, it, with respect to graduation ceremonies, uh, if there is an intention to hold events uh, and celebrate children outside, we provided guidance. We asked school boards to follow it. But if there's anything above and beyond the guidance that a school board has contemplated, uh, it is important that they get their local medical officer of health to sign off on it. Uh, at the end of the day, we want graduation ceremonies and uh, celebrations to proceed outdoor in a safe manner, socially distanced, following the best public health advice to keep the family safe and the children safe themselves. Uh, and we appreciate any school board who's working hard to pivot to a safe in-person outdoor learning experience. Next question. Your next question comes from Chris Rochelle from the Toronto Star. Chris, please go ahead. 
Uh, thank you. I'm just wondering what specifically you're doing for teachers and students with regards to de-streaming, apart from the new curriculum. I'm thinking about supports and resources. Um, I mean, teachers already provide differentiated instruction, so I'm just wondering what will be different under de-streaming, which is a huge change for schools. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is part of our broader aim to lift up the um, the performance and uh, the opportunities for all students in the province. We were the only province in this nation that streamed as early as grade nine. This is part of our broader commitments to uh, improve uh, outcomes, graduation outcomes, and opportunities for post-secondary skilled trades and better careers for young people. So this is part of a broader aim, a four-year math strategy that we're investing $200 million. This year, $40 million is being dedicated specifically to support the implementation of the curriculum. Uh, when it comes to de-streaming, we've announced a series of actions to support at-risk, vulnerable, racialized Black, Indigenous students in the province of Ontario, uh, including a new investments we announced just on Monday to help complement the implementation, especially through the expansion of graduation, Black graduation coaches, uh, which we've almost doubled. Uh, we have expanded access to tutoring. We've uh, obviously taken action through the Learning Opportunity Grant, providing over half a billion dollars of investments to school board to support staffing, as well as additional supports for children who are at risk. Uh, as you know, there's uh, professional development being offered to our students right across the province of Ontario. And I think that de-streaming lens has been really critical by bringing all students together, uh, a more inclusive learning environment. Yes, apply using the differentiated liter learning approach that educators have used, and the scaffolding approach where they're able to work with each individual student, identify needs and build plans for them to support the implementation of a modernized curriculum that uh, also emphasizes some of the key competencies that are necessary uh, for young people. And the fact that this curriculum is more than 15 years old, I think underscores the necessity to make it, to ensure it is modernized and reflective of the uh, job market and of the opportunities that exist post uh, our uh, public education system. So we've invested more uh, through the Learning Opportunity Grants. There's additional funding through our Grad Coaches Program. Uh, there's dedicated training when it comes to the equity uh, with an equity lens to really support students at risk to help lift them up and give them great pathways for their success. Follow up. Yes, thank you. Um, and just following up on Randy's question, because um, I wasn't 100% clear on your on your answer. I mean, the premiers asked that schools hold outdoor grads and celebrations this month, and not many boards are saying that they can do it because of the time. Now you've got a board, the Hamilton board, wanting to go even further and have kids back for a week, elementary kids. So are you going to allow that return? Because it goes beyond just a one-off end-of-year celebration. Yeah, the, the premier's request has been to find ways to celebrate student achievement, uh, especially for those making uh, graduating and fulfilling those milestones. Uh, the spirit of that request was to find an opportunity in the year for children to return in a safe manner with the concurrence of the public health unit. Uh, obviously, we've re received the letter. The guidance we've asked school boards to follow is to uh, conduct outdoor, in-person celebrations. Um, that this particular initiative, um, you know, obviously will require the consent of the local medical officer of health uh, because it is uh, different than what was asked, to be fair. But obviously, we'll continue the discussions with Hamilton and with the local medical officer of health, uh, because at the end of the day, we just want to make sure kids can be celebrated in some way. Uh, and we'll work with any school board that is thinking outside the box in this respect. Next question. Your next question comes from Holly McKenzie Sutter from the Canadian Press. Holly, please go ahead. Hi, uh, just wondering if you can go over what's going to change for other students in grades uh, 10 to 12. Um, now that the new grade nine course is taking effect. In the context of streaming, um, if that's what you're referring to, uh, the government has announced our commitment to the de streaming of the grade nine math curriculum. There will be further announcements in the context of other potential uh, de streamed courses. What I can confirm is that there's a continuum of learning really from our grade one to eight curriculum into our grade nine curriculum. You will know that the new grade one to eight curriculum we announced last year around this time um, really included some foundational uh, changes given that the that curriculum, like the grade nine curriculum, 
it was 16 years old and really obsolete and updated from the core skills that we think young people need. Um, in this curriculum, there's a heavy emphasis on financial literacy. It's now mandatory, whereas in the grade nine curriculum, it included examples, but not a mandatory learning component. We have made that the case, a heavy emphasis on coding, uh, which we think is, is incredibly uh, relevant um, to the job market. Uh, we've also taken action to ensure um, there's an emphasis on the skilled trades, which is something that is unique and much greater emphasized in this curriculum. The overarching aim of this grade nine math curriculum is giving young people the ability to apply theory into their daily lives. For, you know, for example, they're now going to need to produce a budget um, that will have, uh, you know, they'll have to modify the budget based on different assumptions and changing variables. They're going to have to produce a real example, a real life budget for themselves. And I think it's this type of learning that distills the knowledge down to everyday life, everyday problems we have to solve. That's going to be, uh, I think, a, a provide a significant improvement to the curriculum young people learn to help them get jobs in the future, but also help them to manage their personal finances, making financial literacy a pillar of this curriculum. And that will continue on in the grade 10 uh, and 11 and 12 um, curriculum as well. So that there's a heavy emphasis on that in the elementary curriculum that continues now into the grade nine. Um, and I think you'll see that theme throughout the math curriculum, part of our broader four-year, $200 million math strategy to lift math scores up. Because respectfully, you know, under the former government, we saw math scores, uh, you know, decline or at best stagnate. And that's unacceptable when the majority of grade six students in this province uh, were not meeting the provincial math standards. So we put a major emphasis, a four-year, $200 million math plan. We provided significant resources, over $550 million through the Learning Opportunities Grant, which I already announced through the Grant for Student Needs. We are providing resources, expanded tutoring, the largest summer learning program in Ontario history this summer to help reach more children and help them prepare uh, for their journey in learning and for this new curriculum, which I think is going to set them up for long-term success. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to know if you have more information on the timeline and plan for uh, ending streaming and other courses, like if you're going to take it, you know, one course every year, if it's only going to be grade nine, and just looking for any more uh, details you can uh, share on kind of what's next with this de-streaming plan. You know, streaming uh, in Ontario is unique in this country. We're one of the only jurisdictions in the OECD that streams in grade nine. Remember, it has disproportionate impacts, adverse impacts on black racialized indigenous students, disproportionate levels of children uh, being streamed down. Um, and I think that was uh, I think that was a, a data point that was concerning for so many. You know, why uh, why weren't more young people uh, from these communities on a path with the academic stream? And so by eliminating uh, that choice. And by providing all students in an inclusive learning environment, we think with the additional resources provided, uh, equity supports, it's going to make a big difference in improving the math scores of those at risk, while also maintaining the integrity and the high standards for those children that were excelling. We think that in, that could really provide an enriching learning environment by integrating that those students together, uh, and obviously by supporting them with the additional resources announced part of our math strategy. Um, so we believe this has been important in grade nine. We also believe that our work must continue on de-streaming. We're listening and working with partners uh, within a variety of communities who've been adversely affected by streaming to understand what more we can do. My instinct is to go further uh, and to continue our actions to improve uh, the opportunities uh, the, uh, uh, and really give young people, particularly from some of the racialized and black Indigenous communities of our province, um, greater pathways to success. Uh, and so we're excited to be doing this uh, with the grade nine math curriculum. We made this commitment to families and students who really felt uh, ignored for many years under successive governments. Um, so we're proud to be doing this today. And I think uh, we'll continue our actions um, to fight racism, and discrimination, and improve the lives of uh, children from racialized families in Ontario. Go to the next question, and this will be the last question. Your last question comes from Nicole Lampa from CTV News Kitchener. Nicole, please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Getting back to the outdoor celebration, 
One teacher's union uh, says that being able to pull off the celebrations at the last minute requires resources, and they say this could further create stigma between the have and have not schools, further impacting the mental well-being of students in what has already been a chaotic year. Are you forcing school boards to hold these celebrations, and will you be providing guidance for equal celebrations? We provided guidance to all school boards in this province, encouraging them to innovate and find a safe um, way to honor children and student achievement. There are concepts we've heard of parents uh, driving into uh, uh, to the school in groups, the student exits the car, uh, you know, everyone cheers and honks, socially distanced, they take a photo, they still have that opportunity to be with their principal and teacher, socially distanced, get their diploma, and then get back into a safe space. I mean, there are ways to do this that really require uh, nominal or no cost at all. Uh, at the end of the day, we are looking for ways to let kids see their peers in a safe manner. Um, that's what we're hoping uh, to achieve. Uh, so long as it is safe. And we've provided guidance that have been reviewed and supported by the Office of the Chief Medical Officer of Health. So we have confidence it can be done. And we really hope school boards will do everything humanly possible, move every mountain uh, to help these kids uh, and celebrate them after what's been a, just a, a, obviously a very difficult past year. Follow up, and this will be the final question. So a consultation process has begun for changing the name of a high school in Waterloo. It's named Sir John A. Macdonald. What talks are taking place at the ministry level to change the names of schools uh, like Sir John A. Macdonald or Ryerson because these individuals had a role in creating the residential school system? Can we see this process expedited and become a priority? And will uh, we see an update to bring in more education about Canada's Indigenous culture and truth about residential schools? Yeah, I appreciate the question. It's quite obvious that uh, we must continue our work as governments and the reconciliation with First Nation and UNHC, uh, uh peoples of this country um, and what took place within uh, the residential schools uh, in that era is a dark chapter in Canadian history. And I think we all, as I noted off the top, uh, are deeply disturbed by the findings. With respect to our commitment to ensuring that young people today and in the future continue to learn about the rich culture, language, an identity uh, of our First Nation, Métis, Inuit perspectives. Uh, we have ensured that through grade four to eight, as well as in grade 10, that there is mandatory learning um, with respect to uh, residential schools and treaties, uh, and, and including the broader themes around history, culture of our Indigenous peoples. Uh, obviously, we're working uh, to build upon that. In fact, earlier this year, this calendar year, our ministry reached out to Indigenous partners and experts about ways by which we can further strengthen uh, Ontario's curriculum with respect to uh, Indigenous history and greater sense of knowledge on uh, residential schools. And so this is part of our broader commitment to truth and reconciliation. Uh, we take this seriously and work in partnership with Minister Rickford, and that will continue. Um, certainly, uh, uh, that'll continue uh, over the coming months. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you all.